Good day everyone. Welcome back for another lesson. Uh, this one will be uh, slightly special. Uh, we will practice our Lewis and ball and stick diagrams with complex molecules. So if you watch a previous lesson and you're comfortable with the topic, you can skip over this one. But if you'd like to practice, um, this is the right time to do it. So let's go to the um, first example. Actually, I will go over five different examples two um, for ionic bonds and three for covalent bonds. So I suggest that you pause the video for every single example, draw your uh, Lewis diagram, your ball and stick diagram, and then compare to what I did. So let's begin. First example, CABR2. So we need to first look at the periodic table and determine how many valence electrons each one of those elements have. So calcium, calcium is in column number two, so it has two valence electrons. Bromine is in column seven, so it has seven valence electrons. So normally we don't necessarily know who will combine with uh, what or who's gonna give away electrons to what. So we can draw them a little bit just about everywhere. What I suggest you do is that um, in a molecule like this, because you have two bromine and one calcium, most likely the calcium is going to be somewhere in the middle. Now I'm going to be using most of my screen, so I'm going to be using it on this side. So Ca has two valence electrons. Bromine, I'm going to put one on this side, has seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to put another bromine on the other side. One, two, three, and I will do it strategically. Four, five, six, and seven. I'm sorry about the drawings are not super great. I'm using a trackpad and uh, I'm getting used to it. So calcium will most likely give an electron to bromine. So remember we draw an arrow to show that there is a transfer. Calcium will give an electron to the other bromine. So bromine now has eight valence electrons and the other bromine has eight valence electrons and calcium gave away its two extra electrons. So what we might obtain is calcium that has a charge of plus two because it lost two electrons, right? And if we want, we can put the square brackets and we'll have two bromines with eight valence close the square bracket and each bromine has gained one electron so each bromine has a charge of minus one sometimes you'll just see the minus sometimes i'll say minus one sometimes i'll say one minus all of those ways are acceptable. Now, if we draw the ball and stick, we will say calcium is in the middle, bromine, we have one on the right side, one on the left side, and each transfer represents one line. So calcium has two lines because it transferred two electrons and each bromine has one line because they each received one electron. So that's for the first example. Now let's look at Al2O3. So let's look at the periodic table. Aluminum is in column number three. It has three valence electrons. Oxygen, six valence electrons. All right. So since I have two aluminums, what I will do is I will put the two aluminums, one, two, three, like this, and you'll see why I'm doing this. I'm spacing them out, and I'll do one, two, three, and I will do, let's use the same color, oxygen. So I will put my oxygens here. So six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Another one here. I'll do one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and I'm trying to be strategic about this. And I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. And actually, if I was smart, I would have done this here and I will erase one of these. Okay, so now let's take another color to show what's transferred where. So let's start with this oxygen. This oxygen is missing two. So logically, it could get one from here and one from, oops, one from here. So this oxygen is now stable. It gained its two electrons. There's one electron left here. It could go to this oxygen over here. So it would have two electrons on this side. It's missing another one here. So this aluminum could give one electron here. This electron could go over here. And this electron could go over here. And then all the oxygens have eight valence electrons. The aluminums gave their three valence electrons away and everybody's happy. So how does this look like when we write it in terms of um, Lewis notation um, or ionic notation, I should say? So we will have, we always put the metals first. So we have two aluminums. So two atoms of aluminum with no valence electrons. Each aluminum lost three electrons. So they are now more positive by three. And we have three oxygens. Now each oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons at this point. And each oxygen gained two electrons. So each oxygen has a charge of negative two. Now, if you were to do a ball and stick with this, try to picture this and stretch it to the right and to the left as if you want to flatten it. So what would we have? We'd have an oxygen that received two electrons from the first aluminum. This aluminum gave one electron to the oxygen that's in the middle. The oxygen that's in the middle received another electron from the other aluminum. And that aluminum gave two to the other oxygen. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little squished here. Okay, so first oxygen, two electrons from one aluminum, which we have over here. That aluminum gave one to the middle oxygen, which also received one from the other aluminum, which is what we have over here. The oxygen got one from each aluminum. And the last aluminum gave two electrons to the last oxygen, which we have over here. We have the double bond. Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated. This is, as I think, as difficult as it's going to get in terms of ionic bonds. So again, I suggest that you kind of spread out your atoms, alternate the metals with the non-metals, and do your best to keep it as clean as possible. But by alternating the non-metals with the metals, you're probably going to be able to see a clearer structure and your drawing won't look too much like abstract art. So that's for the second example. Now let's move on to the covalent bonds. So we have carbon dioxide as an example. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six. So what are we going to do with this? We are going to put the carbon in the middle because that's the one that's alone. We only have one of them. So carbon has four. And we'll put oxygen, one oxygen on this side. It has six. And one oxygen on this side. Let me do the opposite. One, two, three, four. Five, six. So I'm doing the opposite of what I have here, guessing it might help me um, draw the, the sharing. Because remember, in this case, they are sharing electrons. So oxygen is missing two. So it will share one pair with carbon like this. And we circle the pairs, right, if you recall. Oxygen will share a pair, oops, over here. The other oxygen will share a pair with carbon this way and a second pair like this. 
Okay, so in this case, we don't have any charges, and they are be the electrons are being shared. You might be asked to redraw them, so we would have one, two, three, four for oxygen. I'll just put carbon here and oxygen here. So oxygen has one, two, three, four that it already had. So now they're sharing two pairs between them, like this. So that could be one way of representing it as a final result based on your drawing over here. So you'll have to see with your teacher what, um, what your teacher wants you to do. Some teachers just need this, some people want both, it depends. Now, in terms of ball and stick, we have oxygen on one end, carbon in the middle, oxygen on the other end, and because they're sharing two pairs each, this is what the ball and stick would look like. Okay, so for every pair that's circled, we need a line. This oxygen is sharing two pairs with this carbon, and this oxygen is sharing two pairs with this carbon. Moving on to the next example. C3H8. Now when you get molecules that are uh, combining carbon and hydrogen, I suggest that you put the carbons in the middle. So carbon, hydrogen, so I have three carbons. One, two, three. I'll put one hydrogen on the end. Okay, so now I have six hydrogens left to draw because I have eight in total. So we'll put the hydrogens three at the top and three below. Now hydrogen has one valence electron. Oops. And carbon has four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now, if we start pairing up things, pairing things up, I should say, let's me take a smaller line. All right, so you'll see how simple it is. So, one pair, two pairs, three pairs, because don't forget, hydrogen needs. Two. So it has one, it's kind of sharing the second one over here. So each hydrogen will share one electron with carbon, with the different carbons. So that's why I'm drawing this in a symmetrical way. I happen to know it's going to look this way, and now you know too. That's why I said put the carbons in the middle and put the hydrogens all around. It'll make your life easier. So start by pairing up the hydrogens with the carbons. And then what do we have left? Carbon still has one here to share. Carbon here, the second one has two to share, and this one has three to share. So far, each carbon, or the carbons on the end have two, four, six, seven. So we'll need an eighth one. So these two can share together. And these two can share together. And that way, this carbon has eight, this carbon has eight, this carbon has eight through sharing. How do we uh, draw this as a ball and stick? So we have the three carbons. Each one has a bond with the hydrogen all around like this and like this and like this here here and here. And they have one bond in between them. Okay, so again, for each pair that is circled, we draw one line. So again, we put the carbons in the middle, one carbon, two carbons. We put the H's on each side, so I have one, two, and now I'm left with two. So let me try to do this. Let's say I don't know what's going to happen. Let me try to do this as symmetrical as possible. So each one has one valence. And the carbons have four. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
two, three, four. Let's see what happens with this, okay? So we're gonna start by pairing up the hydrogens. So this should work here. Um, let's try this here. This one. And since we want to do this symmetrical, always these molecules, when they only contain C and H, they're pretty well symmetrical. So now each carbon is connected to the connected to two hydrogens. Now these two halves need to be connected together to have a whole molecule. So what do we have left? This one has two valence electrons left and this one as well. So they can share these pairs. And you see, that's when, when we're not sure what's happening, that's when this becomes a little bit messy. And you're like, okay, they're all paired up, but how do I draw this as a ball and stick? Okay, let's go back to the basics. So the carbons were in the middle. And I'm gonna kind of cheat here. How many bonds do I have in between the two carbons? I have two, so let me start with that. So I have two like this. So there's a double bond between the carbons. Now each carbon is attached to two hydrogens. So I'm gonna do this symmetrical. I'm gonna put them like this to make it look nice and clean. Okay, and each carbon has one bond to each hydrogen like this. Okay, so now it looks symmetrical. This is the actual way it's supposed to look. Now, obviously I knew this, I'm teaching, uh, cheating, sorry, a little bit, but as you get used to these molecules, as you get used to drawing them, you're gonna get a hang of it and you're gonna kind of know how to draw them so they look nice and pretty like this. Okay, so that was it. Hopefully it helped. As usual, if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you around for the next lesson. Have a good one.